All right. So we're going to just pull movies slowly off the shelf, show you them, and be like, okay, talk about them. But first up, we have the Animaniacs Complete Series. This is a show I heard good things about before it came out on this DVD Complete Series set. And this set, what I like about it, that a lot of these sets, even Shelf Factory sets don't have, is an episode guide. And I haven't seen, I haven't even seen some through at least the first season. And it's because I barely watched this since I got it. It's very good. Very funny. I really like it. But I haven't had a lot of time. Now that I'm not doing YouTube so prominently. I could probably get back into it. But I need to finish The Office and other things first. So this will be a show that I probably will do You know, do later on. Probably be a long while. Angry Beavers. This is Shout Factory release. Uh, you know, some people don't like this show. I freaking love this show. Okay. This show I find like really funny. I wish they got to do that one episode where they kind of broke the fourth wall, but they never got to. I feel like I'm talking about check out Rebel Taxi's stupid Nickelodeon decisions or something like that. One of his videos, um, he talks about it and it was very, it's something I wish we got to see, but we got Danny Phantom here. Some people really can't stand the show as well, but there's another Shout Factory release. Um, I still enjoy this show, okay? It's kind of cheesy. It's kind of dumb. But you know what? Who cares? We got a Goofy movie here on DVD. Uh, you know, it's kind of a cheesy 90s movie, but it's still a very good, well-written movie with some dated elements to it. But it's the only movie that I can think of that's animated, made by Disney, where you see characters getting a hot tub. So Now... I have all four, no, three of these volumes. I didn't get volume four from Disney Movie World Club because I really don't like season three. But the first three seasons are like perfection. There's some bad episodes in there, yeah. There's some episodes I'm like, eh. But it's not a show I watch very often because it's way darker than Batman the Made Series. And it's kind of like that show, but a lot darker. And it it's not that fun to watch for that reason. And some of the storylines I just have no interest in personally. Now, I used to have the limited edition set, but I didn't know the wiring was in the back. And, the, and like, the back was coming out. I thought you could do that. So, it broke the wiring. The box ripped super easily. It's a poorly made set. But I did keep the Blu-ray releases of the, C, of the show because they were good. These were good. Okay, this is 60s Batman, by the way. What this? I think this one. Let's see if I can... I believe this has the Green Hornet episode. I'm not really sure. I don't have the episode guide. I didn't feel like I needed it. But yeah. I've only made it through at least season one. But I still really like... Well, I made it through season two, I think, too. But this is a really entertaining, just dumb, guilty pleasure show. I love 60s Batman. And uh, Adam West as 60s Batman. Rest in peace. It, and Cesar Ramirez, rest in peace, as the Joker. It's just a fantastic... Goofy 60s dumb show that I've always gotten into. Alright. Now we're going in my how I have these organized in my. Um, collection. So, for, for next up here, we got these 4K editions of Stranger Things. I didn't have Netflix well, and I really wanted these anyways. And they're just cool display items. They're, I really like these sets. Hopefully, they continue to do them with season three. And those are the 4K ones again. Uh, they're I love the show. Go check that show out. Next up, we got a Shout Factory release of the Critters franchise. Haven't got to watching the making of documentaries, but yeah. As you can see, it's got all four movies here. And this nice box set. 
Um, I really love Critters 1. Critters 2 has its issues, but I still like that one. It's better than Gremlins 2. And Critters 3 and 4, not so good. But yeah, the box set's really nice. Really hard plastic. I really like this set. And they're kind of dumb, gold, gold, uh, fun 80s movies. Um, it's not that much like Gremlins, but I'll talk about more that, about that when I do read Gremlins and Critters comparison video. Next up, we got another Shout Factory release here of Gravity Falls. This is the only Disney show that's animated, that's on Blu-ray, as far as I know. Uh, it's got all three seasons, a nice little episode guide. This is a very good show. I could watch the uh, a few of these episodes over and over again, like Bottomless Pit. It's super funny, it's super well written, it's kind of heartwarming in a sense. And it's got a, the special features are not my type of thing, but they're good, you know, I really like this show. Uh, I got this Target edition of Jurassic Park, which has all four movies. I did not get Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Not ever planning to do that. I don't like Jurassic World, but it came in the set. That's why I have it. Same thing with the other Jurassic Park movies. And I could pass this up. Welcome to Jurassic Park. And it was like, I think it's 50 bucks usually, but I got this for 25 bucks at, you know, Target, uh, this is Target exclusive, it's still on their website too, but yeah, you can see it, like, I don't like the pull-out disc thing, but I just like the box set of it, and it's kind of a cool collector's piece, and that's just a cool image too, and then, uh, you know, an Adventure 50, six, Adventure 65 Million Years in the Making, you know, this was for the anniversary of the movie. I think it's, yeah, 25th. It says right here, 25th anniversary. Um, it's a very good movie. You know, we all love Jurassic Park. And I was, can't I can't get enough of Jeff Goldblum's character in this movie. So, big Jeff Goldblum fan. Uh, Firefly. Do not recommend the set. It's a very good show, but the disc. So let me pull it out here and show you. So, there's like tape here that kind of holds these discs in. And as you can see, the disc isn't there because it had fallen out for like the eighth time. So these discs fall out constantly. That's why I have to be very careful with this set. Um, not to scratch them, but it's a very good show that I do recommend it finding on a streaming service or uh, buying the old DVD release or the Walmart exclusive release of the Blu-ray. But I bought this because it looked nice and it was 15 bucks. I was like, cool. Not cool. Uh, next, next up, one of the best films ever made, 2001 A Space Odyssey, Stanley Kubrick's best movie in 4K. It's a very cool release of the movie, and it's cheaper on Amazon, I think it's like 22 bucks now. This is one of the greatest movies ever made. If you're not a, if you're new to film, watch this movie multiple times. Um, don't expect it to be a fun movie, though. It's really not. It's a... Very well made masterpiece of film that you at least need to see once for its amazing visual effects. The effects are so good that um, Stanley Kubrick was, was you know, people were convinced that he made the fake footage for the moon landing and stuff. It was absolutely insane. And uh, this movie was made back in the 60s. And if you watch this movie... It looks like it could have been made today. It's a very impressive. They should never remake this movie ever, and I don't think they ever will. Next up, we got Batman Return of the Cape Crusaders. This is the limited edition set, which I got for like 10 bucks. It was on sale. Best Buy. And the only different piece is it comes with the comic book, which I believe is like a novelization of the movie. Haven't read the comic book. Have no intent to. I have it because of the movie, and it just looks cool in this little box set kind of case, so I'm going to keep this. I uh, really like this movie, though. It's very good, and it's a very good continuation of the 60s show. Alright, we're just going to gently slide this over here so it's leaning up against something and won't fall over. Next up, another film that if you're new to film and haven't seen, Seven Samurai. This movie is about, like, over three hours. It's a... Um, it's a very deep emotional story. 
with a lot of layers. Very sad movie. Uh, it's not in English. It's a Japanese film that is in, uh, you know, Japanese language with the English subtitles. And I'm working on learning some Japanese. So, as, uh, as this, as, as, as long as this movie is, it needs to be that long. It's an emotional journey with these characters. And it's the best, this is just one of the films that influenced George Lucas to make Star Wars along with Another one, Akira Kurosawa's, if I'm sorry if I butchered his name, uh, films, uh, Hidden Fortress. So I definitely recommend checking that out, especially if you are new to film and you want to know what amazing classics to go check out. Uh, this is another Criterion. This is my favorite movie, Fantastic Mr. Fox. It's the only Wes Anderson movie besides Isle of Dogs, which you'll see later, that I own. I wasn't going to buy all the dogs, but I got the steel book for free from somebody and um, I couldn't pass that up. And if they release a Criterion, I'll grab it. I'll keep the steel book. It looks nice. So this film's very, very good. I highly recommend it. Not buy any other version of the Criterion. Because if you don't know what Criterion's on, they're like a company that re-releases movies that may not have the best releases and they put a bunch of special features. Like this one has a director's commentary with Wes Anderson and a bunch of other really cool stuff. So that's a very good movie. It's my favorite movie of all time. It's got George Clooney, Bill Murray, um, Meryl Streep, Owen Wilson. Very good cast. So Adventure Time, all eight seasons. Good show, but I just wish they'd put the whole show on Blu-ray in a box set. They're releasing it in a box set, but it's all on DVD. So six seasons are on Blu-ray, two seasons are on DVD. Annoying, but that's the collector me talking. So I hope they never release these seasons all together in a box set on Blu-ray because I spent so much money on these sets that I'd just be so ticked off and I have to rebuy it. So Avatar Lost Airbender on Blu-ray. This was, now some of these don't have slips that I bought with slips and it was because I didn't understand the importance of keeping your slips and this has a little crack there if you can see it. So this was one of my collecting regrets but I have to deal with that now and I'm not rebuying it because it's, it's in good shape otherwise. It's just a minor crack. I guarantee you probably couldn't even see it. Um, so we're going to talk about Studio Ghibli. Ocean Waves, not a movie I like at all, and it's not in English. It's the cheapest Studio Ghibli movie. I'm going to own all these eventually, even though some of them I cannot stand. Spirit Away, one of the greatest films ever made. I don't really need to say more. If you know about this movie, you know why it's great, and if you haven't seen it, go check it out, and it is in English. All these are in English. Um, Princess Mononoke. One of the greatest action movies made by Studio Ghibli. And I think another, I would kind of consider this one another one of the greatest films ever made. My Neighbor Totoro. Some people can't understand why this movie is so beloved, but it, gosh, you really need to see all these movies that I'm about to show you. Except for a couple, but this one is very, very good. It's my favorite Studio Ghibli movie besides like Spirit Away, Prince of Mono. Okay. It's very heartwarming it's just an enjoyable little movie and i've never liked this cover because it really doesn't represent the movie but oh well castle in the sky a studio ghibli movie that i you know it's objectively a good movie but i personally i just never got into this one it does feel like a kind of classic 80s adventure movie but i've never been able to sit through it all in one viewing I've tried, I've seen enough of the movie to know I just don't like it that much. Um, How's Moving Castle? Uh, the strangest Studio Ghibli movie, and that's kind of saying a lot uh, for anime, but this isn't one I get into either. Um, I get in it more in the Castle in the Sky. I've seen this a few times. I have to watch this in bits and pieces. It's not that entertaining, and it's a very long, very long time before I ever go back to see this movie. One of my last Hayao Miyazaki movies, the only two I don't own is Ocean Waves, which I already showed you, and then the next one we're going to talk about. His worst movie. Like, I cannot stand this movie. I find it absolutely abysmal. 
it's boring, it's not entertaining. The first 15 to 20 minutes I love, but it's weird how the plain sounds are recorded with actual like human voices, which is the weirdest crap. It it sounds so bad, it makes me want to throw up. But it's very but it, it's awful. I cannot stand it. I know some people like it. I don't care. I find it awful. The Secret World of Ari Arietti. Uh, sorry if I butchered her name. The English dub, I don't like the voice acting that much. I don't get into this movie. I saw... This was probably the first Studio Ghibli movie besides Ponyo that I ever saw. I saw a lot of marketing. I'm like, oh, that looks good. I didn't even know it was anime. And... Um, yeah, it's just not, it's not what I get into. I liked it back when I was a kid and saw it, like, younger. And I just never got into that one. My One of my favorite Disney animated movies, Hunchback of Notre Dame, with the sequel, which I hate. Um, it's a good movie. It has issues. I know some people don't like it, but I think this is a risk that Disney took that really paid off. Probably shouldn't have been made by Disney, though. And I'm surprised they're even considering remaking it. But, yeah. All right. So, we're going to continue to do this in order... So I have all my Disney stuff together on the shelf. So Finding Nemo, the first Pixel movie I bought. I found this at, where did I buy this? I found this at a Swamp Meet here in town. Two bucks. Slip cover was ripped up to shreds so bad that I couldn't even keep it on. It was like sticking to the movie. I had to rip it off and destroy it. Um, yeah, this movie is fantastic. Uh, I mean, I don't know why you haven't seen that movie if you like movies at all, Finding Dory, a disappointing sequel, got this at uh, FYE, Target exclusive steelbook, but I found it at FYE for 10 bucks, so it wasn't the greatest movie, but I enjoy it somewhat, so I bought the steelbook for $10, that's the most I was willing to pay for it, I don't buy Pixar movies that often because, and Disney movies just in general, because they're always going in and out of print, and I don't like that. I like having movies that are in print, and I find it annoying when movies go in and out of print, because I feel like I own something expensive, and I want to be able to watch the movie without feeling bad that I'm damaging something. Nightmare Before Christmas, my second favorite movie. Love this movie. The only two Muppet movies I own, I used to own all of them, uh, but I didn't buy the Blu-rays, because back... When I always start collecting movies, I was like, you know, I want just movies. I don't care what format they're on. Now I do, and so I got rid of all those releases, and I haven't rebought them because all those Blu-rays went out of print, and I couldn't buy them. But these ones I I got when they came out, so these are good movies. Um, this one is technically better, but I prefer this one, personally. So, the BFG... Not Steam Spielberg's best movie, but a movie that I really, really love. And I wish it would have done better, but I can see why people don't get into this one. Still, the performance by uh, the guy who plays the giant, I'm sorry, I don't know his name, phenomenal. It, it was amazing, most in capture work. Uh, I know some people have a problem with that, but yeah. Godzilla 2014, the only Godzilla movie that I like, and I think it's the only one that's actually a good movie, so... Can't wait for Godzilla King of Monsters. Live, Die, Repeat with Tom Cruise. Just bought this for five bucks at a Walmart. That's the most I'm willing to pay for this movie. It's just a dumb, fun action movie. Some people are like, like, this movie's amazing. I think it's just a dumb, fun action movie. And it's okay. I enjoy it. I get enough out of it that I would watch it again. The original Willy Wonka. A classic. Go see it if you haven't. Um, Gene Marvel gives an amazing performance. and it, But not enough people talk about how much of an amazing movie it is. Like people are like, oh, it's a family, fun, classic movie. No, it's like an extremely well-made, well-written movie. It's nothing like the book, actually. I've read the book. Um, it's somewhat like the book, but not really. 
Paddington 2, still need to get Paddington 1. Uh, one of the best films of 2018, next to Spider-Verse. Probably the best one. Space Jam. Now, I only I have very few guilty pleasures, but this is one of my guilty pleasures. And I own it in Steelbook. It doesn't look very good, but yeah. I still love this movie. Can't get enough of it, so it's here. The Iron Giant Signature Collection did not get sign Signature Edition, did not get the Collector's Edition. My dad bought me this, so it was like five bucks something. I love this movie. Yeah. The deleted scene that they added back into the movie was an amazing scene, and this movie's one of the greatest animated films that bombed, and uh, you need to see it if you haven't. But Death of Superman. I'm working on my uh, DC animated movie collection very slowly because some of them are coming to 4K. So, uh, Death of Superman. I didn't get this one on 4K because some my grandpa bought me this one, and also I wasn't buying 4K at the time. But this is a really sad, depressing, well-made movie that demonstrates how great of a character Superman really is. And I feel like if you don't like Superman, you need to see this movie. Um, Batman Ninja Steelbook. Uh, this is not the 4K. This is just Blu-ray. I really, I again, I wasn't collecting 4K at the time. Good Steelbook. Good, uh, not a great movie, but it's kind of a guilty pleasure. And it should have been called Batman Samurai, considering... They're samurai, not ninjas. So, Isle of Dogs, Steelbook. It's not as good as Fantastic Mr. Fox. I will say that. It's a very dark, weird movie. But it's also really, like, delightful. It's kind of a weird movie. I, I definitely think it's worth checking out. Um, I would say watch the trailers before you check out the movie itself. Because it kind of gives you an idea of what you're in for. Anastasia. I hate these slip covers where it's like, oh, yeah, I hate that. I can't stand that. It's just the character's face. It's lazy. It's dumb. But as far as a movie goes, it's it's, it's a pretty entertaining, fun, uh, Disney-like film made by the guy who made Land Before Time, American Tale, and some other really good movies like Secret and M. Ice Age, the first one, the only good one. Castaway, a movie I still need to watch, and yes, this is the Walmart exclusive Deadpool cover, which, yeah, you can kind of see why it has Deadpool on it. So, I still haven't had time to watch that one, but I will get to around to watching that. Mrs. Doubtfire, you know, it's a classic Robin Williams movie that would not work today at all. If you don't know what this movie is about, it's kind of... Ron Williams dresses up as a woman to see his kids because he's not legally allowed to do it after a divorce. And it's it's a ride. Like, it's a really funny movie. And I think if it were to come out today, it would not be socially appropriate. But still darn good movie. Big Trouble in Chinatown. Favorite Curse Ru Kurt Russell movie. My favorite John Carpenter movie. The only John Carpenter and Kurt Russell movie at home. Um... I love that movie. Edward Scissorhands. A really sad, well-made Tim Burton movie with Johnny Depp's best performance of his career. This movie would not be the same without him, so. Coraline. A fantastic movie. Kubo. A less fantastic movie, but still a good movie. A Guilty Pleasure, the Flintstones movie. Serenity to go along with Firefly. And yes, this is the steel book and not the 4K. Because like I said, wasn't collecting 4Ks at the time. The Prince of Egypt. A beautiful masterpiece that is extremely underrated and more people need to see. You do not need to be religious to like this movie. You just need to watch it and give it a shot. To the final stretch here of movies. The Wallace and Gromit Blu-ray collection. The only one I don't have is Curse of the Were-Rabbit. That's coming to Blu-ray. 
So can't wait to put those side by side. Shaun the Sheep movie. I really like that one. Can't wait for the sequel. SpongeBob, Sponge Out of Water. Still didn't get the first SpongeBob movie. I prefer this one over the first SpongeBob movie because it's hilarious. Uh, this one's super funny. That one's less funny, but it's still a good movie. So, Secondhand Lions. Very good movie. Uh, definitely worth checking out. The Power Rangers movie, A Guilty Pleasure for My Fandom. The Transformers, the movie, another guilty pleasure. And yes, this is the Steelbook edition. Looks fantastic. And then... The Home Alone collector set in the pink can. It's all five movies here. So you got the Blu-ray, DVD, Home Alone 2 Lost in New York, Home Alone 3 on DVD, and then Home Alone Taking Back the House, Home Alone, The Holiday Heist, and then it says, Keep the Change, You Filthy Animal. Ultimate necessity if you're a Home Alone fan or collector to have in your house. Oh my gosh, my nerd. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this. This is the end of the collection video. I gotta put this whole mess back. Um, but yeah, that's my Blu ray collection. And it's just nice talking about my movies in a quicker format, not trying to be Mr. Objective and stuff. I just get to talk about things I like. And like I said, this is the new format of video. Just talking about the things I like in a shorter, better way than I have been before. And it's less negative, And I enjoy all this stuff here. So...